I am Master Robin Waters, and we're here today for that. Hey guys, Robert J. Morris here, and I have an update. What you're looking at is a video taken on October 5th of a hearing with none other than Thomas David House of Deegan, who was arrested in late September for conspiracy to commit terrorism or a terrorist act and really all he did was call out on other citizens to come back to West Virginia to take it back and oust their government. This is a very interesting video because he does not back down and he does not play a part in the pony show that we call the justice system. Anyway, sit back, enjoy. It's about 13, 14 minutes long, but it's very rewarding when you see the judge almost lose her mind. Thank you. I'll be back with more updates. Um, you have options today. You can have your felony preliminary hearing, which you are entitled to today, or you can have a hearing today in which um, the state has witnesses to call, and you can cross-examine those witnesses. Do you have counsel present? I have no assistance of counsel, and I have no understanding of what we're doing here. Okay. Well, when I read you the other night, I informed you why we were here, I explained the criminal warrant to you. I explained the criminal complaint to you. I went over your rights. I offered to do a financial affidavit on you to receive a court-appointed attorney, and you told me that you didn't want to sign anything. I said I had no understanding. But I explained it to you. Two or three times I explained that to I you. I still don't have understanding without speaking and having assistance of counsel. Do you want to waive your right to have an attorney present? If you waive your right to having an attorney present, you may speak to the prosecuting attorney. I, I wish to waive nothing at this time because I have no understanding of what's going on. Okay. What part do you not understand, sir? All of this I have no understanding of. Well, the, the state has brought forth a criminal complaint and a warrant, and you were charged with a crime, and I told you what the penalty of that crime was. And now, if you would like to proceed with your preliminary hearing today and go forth with that, you may do that. And then that way you can cross-examine the witnesses, and maybe that would help you to understand that or what you, why you're here. No, the Supreme Court requires that I have understanding. I have no understanding. I have no assistance of counsel. Okay. Would you like for me to fill out a, a financial affidavit with you today to see if you qualify for a court-appointed attorney? That would be different from assistance of counsel under my understanding, I believe. What assistance of uh, counsel are you uh, requesting, sir? The one protected by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Well, what we have for in my courtroom today is I can offer you a affidavit to fill out with you to see if you qualify for a court-appointed attorney. If you do not qualify, then you may retain your own counsel if you would like to do so. And you may hire an attorney in that way, because I am not allowed to explain anything further to you because I'm the court and I have to stay fair, neutral, and impartial. So what would you like to do, sir? Well, I would need to speak and have assistance of counsel to decide. I have no idea. I have no understanding. Well, then I can fill out a financial affidavit. Is that what you're wanting to do, sir? But would that be a member of the bar that is incorporated under the Supreme Court? Yes, sir, because that's the court and the attorneys that I recognize in my courtroom here in the state of West Virginia, the county of Wood County. Then, they have to be initiated by the West Virginia Supreme Court and pass a bar. I will not recognize another person representing you in my courtroom today. They have to be represented by the bar. Then, I, once again, I would have to go back to I do not have understanding here of what is happening then. There, there may be a, a conflict in law forms, venues, jurisdictions here. Um, I did give notice of an abatement, a refusal for cause, a challenge to jurisdictions. There is a federal civil rights complaint that was filed Friday. And where was that filed at? Sir? In Charleston. You'll be served today or tomorrow, um, as well as the trooper that arrested me. And then there is an ongoing case in the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals in which the entire state and all of its subdivisions are all defendants. So there seems to be some conflicts here. Well, I am not here to argue with you today about the law. I am here today to represent the court for a felony preliminary hearing today. The state is here and is represented and the defendant is present. Um, what would you like to do today, Mr. Wharton? 
the state is uh, prepared to present evidence um, just given the uh, defendant's uh, statements that he does not understand, I would at least ask the court to go back over uh, the initial rights so uh, it's clear on the record because that initial proceeding is not a uh, recorded proceeding and this will make clear for the record so okay. the reviewing court. Then what we will do is we'll, we're going to put it on the record and <coughs> Mr. Stevens, if you would bring the defendant up forward, what we're going to do is we're going to go everything over everything with him, okay? So I'm still not going to have any understanding without assistance of counsel. I'm going to do an introduction of the recorded hearing. I'm Magistrate Robin Waters of the Wood County Magistrate Court and we are here today October the 5th, 2015 for a preliminary examination in this matter of State of West Virginia versus Thomas David Deegan. Case number 15M54F-00463. The defendant, Thomas David Diggin, is self-represented here today, and the state is represented by Jason Wharton. I'm just saying you're here present, and I'm saying that you are representing yourself here today. Uh, but I'm not representing myself. But you're here in person in front of me is what I'm saying, sir. Okay? forward and read the legal language to the defendant please as just like at a an arraignment there you go sir okay. threats of terrorist acts conveying false information concerning terrorist acts and committing terrorist hoax prohibited penalties or in subsection B any person who knowingly and willfully threatens to commit a terrorist act with or with intent to commit the act is guilty of a felony and upon conviction here and shall be fined not less than $5,000 and no more than $25,000 and confined in a state correctional facility for not less than one year no more than three years or both. Okay, that is what the state has charged you with. Uh, now as far as your rights go... I do not understand what you just said. He said that you're charged with terroristic threats. That is the charge brought before the court. <coughs> See, I have no understanding of that. Well, we're still going to go over it, and it's going to be on the record, and we are recording. That doesn't make me have understanding, though. That doesn't make you understanding, but we have record of it where I have went over your rights with you, okay? As of arraignment, you told me that your name was Thomas David House of Deegan and you didn't want your name capitalized. So I changed it on the format here to Thomas David House of Deegan on your original paperwork. But it's on the introduction of recorded here. That's because that's how it's set up in the computer system, sir. Well, that would be I would be fair and partial if I changed your name, but that's the way I do it for all defendants that's brought before me, sir. So you are no different from any other defendant that's that is brought before me. Well, I, okay. would, I would state that I'm the beneficiary of the Sescovy Trust that is the matter at hand here today. Okay, you are charged with threats of terroristic acts. That is fine, not less than $5,000, no more than $25,000, or confined in the state correctional facility for not less than one year, no more than three years, and or both. You do have the right for an attorney to represent you at every stage of the proceeding. If the West Virginia Code provides for a possible jail sentence, if you cannot afford to hire an attorney and you qualify, one will be appointed to represent you. You understand this right because I have said that you do have the right for counsel to represent you. Yeah, I would like assistance of counsel, absolutely, but you have told me repeatedly attorneys. Those are two different things. I would like assistance in of the, counsel. In my court, that's what I recognize as counsel, an attorney by the West Virginia Supreme Court and entered assistance into the bar. Assistance of counsel, absolutely. I need assistance of counsel because I have no understanding. Well, you can hire your own attorney or somebody to represent you, but they have to be in my courtroom, recognized by the West Virginia Supreme have, Court, I and no past the state I'm bar. Confined. I Would you no like money. for me to fill out a financial affidavit? Is, is, it, is it assistance of counsel? That's I've what told they would you be. what it is. 
but I'm not here to argue with I'm you. Not, I'm trying to understand. You said that I need to understand, and the Supreme Court has said I need to understand. I'm trying to understand here because okay. I'm not represented. I do not have someone telling me. Okay. It's an attorney. That's what the court recognizes. And it's an would attorney. act in, in the capacity of an assistant of counsel. Well, I don't recognize that. Mr. Would you? Yes. In a previous hearing, Mr. Deegan had uh, standby counsel appointed um, by the court. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if that's something that the court might want to consider. I will. Do you want to sign anything here today, sir? Um, not without assistance of counsel okay. first, because All we right. have we have some problems with the but names. What and I'm doing, okay. The first she hears, I have advised you that you do have the right for an attorney. And and I do wish to have assistance of counsel. It is a felony charge. It is not a misdemeanor charge. It also states that you are to be present personally and in all proceedings. This states that you are to appear to begin serving jail prison time as ordered by the disposing court if the court renders a verdict of guilt on the offense charge and poses a penalty of incarceration. You are to inform the court immediately of any change of name, address, or telephone number. You cannot leave the state unless you have permission of the court. You are not to violate any state or federal laws and you are not allowed to have any contact with Kanawha County or the state capitol. Is that victim here today? It says alleged victim. Is that victim present? That's whatever I put in this blank. It's a blank and I typed in the state capitol. I know, here, but it, it says We do have a witness for here today, okay? It says alleged victim. I do have the right to face my accuser, do I not? <clears throat> right. If you want to go forth with your felony prelim today, the, the state has said that they are ready to go forth and proceed and the, have witnesses called. Here? We do have an officer here for the state today. No, the, Would you the, the like victim. to proceed with that? No, I'm asking, is okay. the victim here today? There is no victim in court. That would be up to an attorney, so I'm going to appoint you an attorney today, sir. Well, That's what I'm going to do. I do not accept the appointment, but I will talk to one and see if I like the contract they offer. Can be trust of which I'm the beneficiary. Well, right now I'm looking at Thomas David Deegan as being your name. That's brought you forth, and you are defendant present in my courtroom today. And I'm appointing Mr. John Oshawa, who's next on the appointed list, for an attorney to talk to you today. I will give him a copy of your stuff, and I will contact the circuit judge. J.D. Bean, who is over the court appointed attorneys, since you don't want to fill out a court appointed attorney list affidavit, so that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> you can go back and have a seat, sir. Actually, I'm done with it. You can just take him on across. Are we now at the 10th day? We may need to contact the circuit court for. I will do that. Yes, sir. I would like to make sure that the next time I'm present that the victim is here so that I may face my accuser in court. I'm done. Take these walls and rip them, rip them down.